Good morning and welcome back. Was the king of Judah, when he was taken captive by Babylon, was he eventually befriended by the king of Babylon, even though he was held prisoner by him? Our reading is from Jeremiah 52, verses 31 to 34. Now it came to pass in the 37th year of the captivity of Jehoiakim, the king of Judah, in the 12th month, on the 25th day of the month, that Avil Merodach, king of Babylon, in the first year of his reign, lifted up the head of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and brought him out of prison. And he spoke kindly to him and gave him a more prominent seat than those of the kings who were with him in Babylon. So Jehoiakim changed from his prison garments, and he ate bread regularly before the king all the days of his life. And as for his provisions, there was a regular ration given him by the king of Babylon, a portion for each day until the day of his death, all the days of his life. So it seems that the king of Babylon befriended Jehoiakim, who had been the king of Judah, but he was taken captive and brought to Babylon. The scriptures we just read tell us that the king of Babylon liked to talk in particular with Jehoiakim. It even says he gave him a more prominent place than the other kings who were with him. You know, the other prisoners that had been, the other leaders of the other nations that had been taken prisoner. I wish we knew more about this friendship than we do. A lot of times, the leaders are very lonely people. They feel a great burden upon them, the great responsibilities of of what they're doing, but they have very few people they can trust or confide in because people around them are triangulating for power or, or for their own agendas and their own purposes. So a lot of times leaders, very lonely people, hard to trust others. It's a pretty distinct kind of a situation. We should watch for opportunities to connect with people, whether they're low social station or high social station, because God wants every heart in the kingdom, every single one certainly including anybody who would be even a king or a president or a leader of that kind. We should never assume that someone will refuse to connect with us. Sometimes we get surprised. God can work out situations in which divine appointments are made and new friendships are formed through which we can influence others toward the kingdom of heaven. And we should always be seeking those kinds of opportunities. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, keep our hearts ready to influence others for you, no matter what situation we find ourselves in. We pray that you will reign not only in our hearts, but reign in the hearts of others, and that you'll, through our lips and through our actions, you'll be able to speak to others and guide them close to your heart, Lord. Bless us and help us in all that we do. Watch over us for good and for the glory and help of your kingdom. And Lord, we thank you that we know you hear our prayer for this, and we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, after 280-some episodes here, this concludes our series of devotionals on the book of Jeremiah, from verse 1 to the last verse. But tomorrow morning, uh, we're going to be carrying on with, uh, I think, something that you'll find quite interesting. If you found Jeremiah helpful, we're going to do another book, a much shorter book this time. So come back tomorrow morning and see what it is, but it actually pertains to the book of Jeremiah. God be with you.